You're watching Just the News. I'm Amitabh Balachandra. Let's get straight to our top story. It's day 24 of Ukraine crisis. We start off with what's happening in Mariupol, one of the worst affected cities in Ukraine. The BBC has reported that fighting is taking place in the streets in the centre of the besieged old city of Mariupol, which is hampering efforts to rescue people trapped under the rubble of a theatre that was shelled on Wednesday. As many as 3 lakh civilians are unable to evacuate from Mauripol at the moment. That uh, is the latest information that's coming in. Also, according to Al Jazeera, 130 people had been saved after the bombing of a theatre in Mauripol that uh, uh, was shelled on Wednesday. But several are still feared to be trapped. Meanwhile, the UN's World Food Programme has said that it cannot reach the thousands of people trapped there because it is completely encircled by Russian forces. Now, speaking to AFP, World Food Programme's emergency coordinator has said, and I quote, the closer you go to these cities, the more worried they are about their safety. And that means we're not able to reach these people in Moripol, Sumi, Kharkiv, in the cities that are almost encircled by now, completely in the case of Moripol, end quote. Also in the news, the Ukrainian military has imposed a 38-hour curfew in the southern city of Zaporizhia, starting at 14 GMT on Saturday and ending early on Monday. The regional capital has become an important point of transit for some of the 35,000 people estimated to have fled Mariupol. In the meantime, the deputy mayor has said nine people were killed and 17 wounded in the shelling in the suburbs of the city of Zaporizhia in southern Ukraine on Friday. Also in the news, according to Reuters, which quoted an IFX report, Russia's defense ministry has reported the use of hypersonic missiles in Ukraine. Now, it also said that the radio renaissance uh, centers of Ukraine's military has been destroyed as well. In the meantime, Ukraine's president has urged Russia's President Putin to join him for peace talks without delay saying it is, and I quote, the only chance for Russia to reduce the damage of its own mistakes. He also said that it was, and I quote, time to meet, time to speak. I want to be heard by everyone, especially in Moscow, end quote. Meanwhile, Ukraine's general staff has claimed that over 14,000 Russian troops have been killed in the first three weeks of Moscow's uh, invasion of the country. Uh, Ukraine has said that Moscow has lost a huge amount of military equipment, including around 1,470 armored troop carriers, 60 tanks, and over 100 fighter jets and helicopters as well. Now, amidst all of this, Poland's Prime Minister has urged the European Union to impose a total ban on trade with Russia. He said, and I quote, Fully cutting off Russia's trade would further force Russia to consider whether it would be better to stop this cruel war, end quote. Now, the EU has already imposed trade restrictions on Russia to, uh, in some key sectors, including lux- luxury goods, steel and energy. Now, the UN Migration Agency on Friday said that nearly 6.5 million people have so far been displaced inside Ukraine. Apart from that, the agency has also estimated that 3.2 million uh, people have now fled Ukraine. Now, reacting to reports of buying discounted crude oil from Russia, India on Friday said that countries with, and I quote, oil uh, self-sufficiency or those importing themselves from Russia cannot credibly advocate restrictive trading End quote. Now, this comes at a time when there are reports that Indian Oil Corporation, the country's top oil firm, has bought 3 million barrels of crude uh, that Russia had offered at a steep discount on prevailing international rates. In the meantime, officials have told Reuters, and this is a Reuters report, which has said that India's oil imports from the United States will rise by 11% this year. Moving away from the story now in other news that's coming in from across the country. The next couple of news stories are extremely distressing. So trigger warning for people who are watching right now. If you wish to stop watching at this point, you must do so. This next story comes in from Pune. Pune police have said today that a case has been registered after an 11-year-old girl 
alleged she was raped by four of her family members, including her father and brother, since 2017. Now, police have registered a case under various sections of the IPC for rape and molestation, but are yet to make arrests. The police have also said sections of the protection of children from sexual offences or the POXO Act will be added. Now, Police Inspector Ashwini Satpute has told NDTV and I quote, The incident came to light when the girl opened up during a good touch and bad touch session in her school. Her ordeal was going on for the last five years, end quote. Also in Rajasthan, after Jitendra Pal Meghwal, a COVID-19 health assistant living in Barba village in Rajasthan's Pali district, was killed on Tuesday, the police have now arrested two people. Now, the kin of the victim have been claiming that he was killed because he had good looks and a personality. The police, however, have said that that is not the case and that allegation is not true. Rajasthan police have said that the murder was not related to the Dalit victim's attire or the fact that he kept a moustache. Um, they said on Twitter, and I quote, The murder was the result of a mutual li- rivalry related to a case registered in 2020, end quote. Also in the news, India is at the 136th spot on the World Happiness Report this year when compared to the 139th spot that was reported last year. So a very marginal improvement there. And this is out of 146 spots. So India falls amongst the unhappiest countries list. Afghanistan was named the most unhappy country in the world, ranking last in that 146 um, countries. Finland, however, has topped the list for the uh, fifth time in a row. Also, amidst a massive uh, global COVID surge, the centre has now asked states to step up vigil and intensify surveillance through aggressive genome sequencing to prevent any reversal uh, in the trend of declining cases in uh, in, in the country. Uh, Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan has said in a letter to states, and I quote, I would also like to emphasize that there should be continued focus on the fivefold strategy, which is test, track, treat, vaccinate, and ensure adherence to COVID appropriate behavior. End quote. Also in the news, the Punjab police have informed today that four people have been arrested in connection with the mu- murder of Kabaddi player Sandeep Singh Sandhu earlier this week. Now, three main conspirators have been booked in this incident. Sandhu, who is also known as uh, Sandeep uh, Nangal Ambian, was shot dead after returning to his hometown from Britain to organize a Kabaddi tournament. Also, there's bilateral talks that's happened between uh, Prime Minister Modi and Japan Prime Minister. Uh, in fact, this is because of the India-Japan Annual Summit. Now, this is the Japanese Prime Minister's first visit to India since assuming office last year. Ahead of the visit, Japan Prime Minister said, and I quote, Since the Russian invasion of Ukraine coincides with this trip, I'd like to emphasize the importance of international unity and confirm that Japan and India will work together on various issues, end quote. Now, India and Japan are party to what's called as the Quad, or Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, which is a security framework that also includes the United States and Australia. Now, Japan's Nikkei newspaper uh, reported that Prime Minister Kishida is expected to announce a plan to invest 5 trillion yen, which is about $42 billion, uh, in India over five years during this visit. And news coming in from Punjab. Punjab's governor had admi- has administered oath to 10 ARP MLAs who were inducted into Punjab Chief Minister Bhagwan Man's cabinet today. In the meantime, in its maiden meeting uh, after the oath-taking ceremony today, the Punjab cabinet gave its nod for providing 25,000 government jobs uh, to youth in various departments, boards and corporations of the state. Now, the chief minister said that out of those 25,000 jobs, 10,000 would be in the police department. Also, we told you yesterday about Cyclone Asani. Uh, With the year's first cyclone Asani brewing over the Bay of Bengal, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands administration today issued an advisory for fishermen appealing to them not to venture into the sea during the period of the cyclone 
from March 19th to 22nd. So that advisory has come in today. Uh, the weather forecast by the IMD had said that the low pressure area of the Bay of Bengal will become well marked by the 20th of March morning and turn into a cyclonic storm on the 21st of March. Now, it will then move along and off the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and reach the Bangladesh North Myanmar coast on the 22nd of March. On to environment news right now. This is coming in from Gujarat and this is a PTI report which says that a wildfire erupted near the Mithiala Sanctuary for Asiatic Lions in Gujarat's Amreli district on Friday evening. The report said the fire was nearly brought under control before it could affect the animals in the area. So an official has told PTI and I quote, no animal casualty has been reported in the place so far and the area will be scanned for the next three days, end quote. Moving on to international news right now, we've been continuously reporting about global COVID surge and maximum of it coming in from China. China has now reported two COVID-19 deaths today in a first in more than a year. The National Health Commission has said that both deaths occurred in Shilin, the northeastern province, which has been the hardest hit uh, by a nation nationwide rise in cases that has prompted lockdowns or tight restrictions in several cities within China. Now, President Xi Jinping on Thursday said that China would stick with its zero COVID strategy but allow for a more targeted approach. Now, some cities have been closed off, uh, like the tech hub Shenzhen, for instance. However, measures were partially eased uh, in Shenzhen as well. Shanghai, in the meantime, has moved schooling online and rolled out mass testing, but has avoided a full lockdown. And one piece of positive news before we wrap things up here on this bulletin, this comes in from Odisha. Residents of Kedrapara's Gagua village uh, have built a one-room Paka post office by pooling in their own money. Now, this was earlier an old uh, mud wall thatched hut, uh, but now there is a new post office building thanks to these villagers. One villager speaking to the New Indian Express has said, and I quote, The thatched house in which the post office functioned was on the verge of collapse. Many donated generously and we were able to complete the post office building at a cost of 2 lakh rupees and gold. That brings us to the end of this bulletin. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.